Welcome back to another edition of Out of Touch with John Alden and Mitchell Page. No Dustin Shooty tonight, but I will say this. You may or may not be able to hear my dog Lily barking in the background. Mitchell, is that coming through on your end? I can't hear her, no. You can't? Okay. She's barking at something. I'm not sure. Oh, what. I just heard that one. <laughs> you heard that one? Yeah, just a little. Maybe the music was drowning it out a little bit at first. Uh, she she is either she either sees a couple walking or a squirrel, a rabbit, uh, potentially another animal. It's uh, a busy job no being a dog. It is, and she busy does a great job, job guarding the house. So, busy job. Again, so what's new with you, in. man? It's been a couple weeks since I've been on. Happy it has be been. Back. You've been busy being Papa Mitch. I've yeah. been busy getting a new job started. We talked about that on last week's episode. We had our buddy Kyler Staley on to do a little yeah. cross promotion. It was I a good it. time. Uh, and yeah, I'm, I'm excited. I'll go ahead and mention that again. I'm working with, uh, with Hoosier Illustrated and my very first episode with them in touch with Indiana sports, uh, released yesterday by the time this was released. So I'm very excited about the prospect of, of what that could do, uh, and the, the potential for a new audience and being able to have some crossover with the out of touch audience. And hopefully it, it allows both of these shows to grow. And also this is going to sound like a self brag. But I am very glad that I could tie in the names of the two shows together and kind of it's, keep the the touch perfect. brand, if you will. It's perfect. It's touch media. Touch media. But we can't call them touchers, though. I think that's off limits. We've made that clear. I agree. I agree. But I'm proud of you, yeah. man. That's that's a big step, and it's going to be awesome. And I'm, I can't wait to I listen to the first one. Can't wait to listen to the rest. So you did listen to it? Yeah. Oh, okay, now. well, well, good stuff. I tell you what, and you, you, so you heard me say what I'm about to say. Then doing a solo show, it's a whole new level of I, of I mentality. Can't say, I mean, I was really excited to hear what you had to say. I was equally as excited to hear how you did it solo. I think that's one of the hardest things. Those guys that do it every morning solo for two hours, three hours, I don't know how you do it. And again, I'd never done that until today. And I guess I'll be doing it more often now than I ever thought before. But I work with a guy in the afternoons. I mention him on the show quite often, Nick Coffee, And I'm his producer and I'm a contributing producer. So I do go back and forth with him from time to time. But he's also one of those guys. He can monologue for, for 20 minutes and, and just kind of go on and on and on. And that can drive some people insane. Yeah. And that's why it is good to, to bring guests on here and there. So I'll find a good mix that works, but I got to say it's, it was, I'll, I'll say this real quick. It is something once, once that maybe just cause it was the first show. Right. But I felt the, the, the high that I got once I was done, I don't know if that's something that will be common or if, again, it was just a coincidence for it being the first time, but I'll take that anytime because it felt good. I was so nervous going into the first one, but I think getting that kind of monkey off your back, and maybe that's not the right saying for this in particular, but getting all that nervous energy out and then finally doing it, that was very relieving. And I think that goes for anybody who tries something new for the first time. Yeah, especially something you care about, right? Yes. Like, I've done a lot of things for the first time that I didn't care if it went well or not, and you feel no butterflies. But it's the reason that I still play golf and play in tournaments competitively. <laughs> it's the butterflies you get on the first tee because I care about it. Similar with you, you care about this show, you're going to get butterflies every time you press record and you're just going to feel adrenaline and it's and you're just going to get better and better at it too, which leads to better and better shows, which leads to, you know, more of those kind of high moments. And that's 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 the goal, right? So, and again, speaking of goals, I mentioned this on last week's episode, either this episode or maybe it's next week's, but I think it might be this one. Let me see if I can even double check this real quick. We are at the the threshold, Mitch, of being of doing the out of touch podcast for a year. And I'm going to try to confirm right now when that exact date is. And see. Well, this is out of touch over. number 50. Yeah. So but if we if we did skip two weeks in between. True. So here we go. August 2nd was when we released Out of Touch number one. So next Friday will officially be the the one year anniversary of Out of Touch. That's so awesome. We're, we're there. We've been doing it. And it's I, and honestly, I don't want to say I can't believe we made it this far because it sounds kind of dumb. Uh, but I didn't really know that I could fully commit or really not even I, but all three of us could commit to really 
doing this every single week. And I know it's like we, we each take breaks here and there and that kind of thing. But I think for, for anything like this, especially podcasting, the fatigue can set in early, especially if you don't get the results that you want. And you, that's why you see a lot of people get frustrated whenever they do this type of thing, even if it's for fun, if they don't get the, the interaction, the listenership. And obviously, we're not a huge podcast. We're not even – we're barely – I mean, we're just a small podcast. It's really, you could even call it a baby podcast if you want to. I mean, we're, we're a little we're baby Margaret podcast. That's it. Yeah, a little, a little baby <laughs> Margaret podcast. And I guess that we'll we'll go ahead and I'll go ahead and ask you a little bit more about that. Uh, your baby what, is three weeks old now? Just had her month, month oh anniversary. Oh my gosh. Yeah, month time is flying. Right. She was born on the 22nd of June. So this, we're recording on the 24th of July. And yeah, we... Made it a month. We're right in the. Was thick it the of it. fastest month of your entire life? Yeah, it's everybody's. I mean, you always hear the cliche: the days are long, but or the years are no. Days are long, years are short. See, so yeah, I can't even do it. Days are long, but the years are short. That felt like the fastest and slowest month. You don't really know what's happening. Bullets are flying. There's poop everywhere. But then you are. You look back and gosh, she's already a month old. She's gained all kinds of weight. She's growing. She's almost out of her preemie stuff, which is awesome. Um, and she was she was barely preemie. She just was so small that she doesn't fit into it, like newborn size stuff yet. But she's close, and that'll be something that my wife and I will look at each other when she officially grows out of that and be like, "Wow, this is just it happens really fast." What do you think has been the most joyous thing about this time, this first month? Watching Laura, she just has gotten so much more comfortable and it just, she's mom. It's really cool to watch that. Cause right now, yeah, when she, baby is able to smile at us and laugh, that changes everything. But right now, I think I talked about this a little bit. It just, it's like a, another full-time job where she doesn't, <laughs> this sounds so bad, but like <laughs> you don't get anything in return for changing the diapers and feeding her just quite yet. Right. You have a little baby girl, but she's not really a part of the house yet. Cause she can't really interact with stuff. Once she starts doing that, it'll change everything. So right now you just get to watch mom become mom and it's, it happens really fast and the, the instincts and she just, she does an awesome job. So I would say that's been the coolest, but we're really excited for Maggie to start being able to see stuff and laugh and, do the Just, whole thing you, you'll eventually see more of her personality show through yeah laura swears that we've seen a couple bits of her personality maybe i'm just dumb but it's coming <laughs> we're getting there we're getting there uh i mentioned earlier dustin shooty at least i think i mentioned he's not with us did i say that at the beginning of the show i you hope did. i did because i've you been did. guilty of not saying that in the past yeah but do you know where he's at tonight mitch i do i'm just curious if you know where he's yes at. he's a he's a big time reporter he's at big 10 media days well, that's where he's been during the day, but do you know where he is right now? Oh, I don't. He is in Cincinnati at a Foo Fighters concert. No way. He is. And I don't okay, know if you're so a Foo he's... Fighters guy, but I didn't even know Dustin was a Foo Fighters guy, but that's where they're at right now at Great American Ballpark. Is that why his girlfriend went with him? Uh, that wouldn't surprise me if they're, maybe they're both Foo Fighters fans or maybe she is and, and he's just tagging along. But, you know, she was at Big Ten Media Days as well. I don't know. I didn't watch a lot of the live coverage today. I watched uh, a little bit of Tony Petiti yesterday. I'm going to watch Kurt Signetti tomorrow, meaning, heck, again, talking in, in, in rewind speak. I usually don't always get that. I try my best to do it correctly, but Tony Petiti spoke on Tuesday. I watched that. I'm going to watch Kurt Signetti on Thursday, which is today at the time of release. So, yeah. I'm a little bit I've nervous watched a ton for of it. Kurt Signetti, if I'm being You're honest. nervous for him? Yeah. How come? I don't know. He just... This is like your first real chance to be the face of the program on a bigger stage, and he's Are just, you worried he's going to pull like a like what he did at Assembly Hall in front of the fans and say something totally out I of want, pocket. That would be awesome. I I just think he, and maybe this is totally wrong. I don't know him at all. I still haven't met him, but he just gives off the perception of like I don't need this, and. At something like that, you have to just be super positive and really excited about what you're doing. And I just don't think in his mind it's worth his time. 
And <laughs> so when, it, when and that's um, I mean, every coach is like that. I just don't think he hides it very well. Uh, huh. It just, I I want him to to show some excitement and some enthusiasm for the team, as opposed to just like, yeah, we're getting better and there's we're gonna win every game. I I want him to say stuff like that, but. I'm a little more positive, I think, or a little up, more upbeat <laughs> about things. So yeah. I, I just want him to to do well because that, that's a nerve-wracking thing. The Big Ten and the SEC are now the two big dogs, and he's going to be the first face of Indiana in the big conference. And uh, you just you just want good things to happen. I don't know. It's a weird feeling. Maybe this is a homer there. mentality of me as well, but I don't see any scenario where he doesn't kill it behind the microphone tomorrow. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe he says something totally ridiculous and – Something we wouldn't expect, but who knows? It's not even about what he says. It's more how he says it. Yeah, that's I mean, true. That's because I think he's he's been good, but it's at media day, it's time to be a little fluffy. And I don't think he's got fluffy. <laughs> Who's he bringing? Do you know who what players are coming? Mike Kadick, Aiden Fisher, and Justice Ellison will be there. Okay. Okay. So, so all, maybe one returning player and two from uh once from well once from jmu once from i think wake forest if I'm not oh mistaken, yeah, yeah maybe yeah. north carolina Justice Ellison is from wake yeah okay yeah. so yeah there's a there's your football talk there's our yeah. football talk for I, the they day. did get rated pretty highly in ncaa have you been playing the new ncaa game dude i have a pc i don't have an xbox i didn't know that they weren't going to release a pc version it's why aren't they that's insane I, I read something about it it makes sense so because of all the licensing and paying the players a specific way for their inclusion in the game. When games go to PC, people just mod the games and oh, hack yeah. it, and you can start putting people in the game that weren't in there before, and then it messes up all the copywriting, everything like licensing mostly. Uh, well, what's stopping somebody who's super good with computers from ripping the like the CD from the PS5 or PS4, whichever you're playing on? I don't even know if it's on PS4. Let's just say somebody wants to take the. This is getting really nerdy, by the way. <laughs> yeah, like taking the CD from PS5 and and like burning it. And then somehow doing something with it to putting it on their own PC and playing it that way. I don't know if that's possible. I'm sure there is a way to get around doing that. But who's stopping somebody from from trying that? I don't know the answer, but I think <laughs> I think it has to do with when you buy the game. Like nowadays, you have to download it on. You have to rip it directly from the CD. Oh, you're right. You're it right. To the Xbox, or if you download a PC game. It comes directly from whoever produced the game, and you have to agree to all these things. Okay. I don't know if that writing would get into a burnt disc. Maybe it would. I don't know the answer. Um, but it has to be like a licensed copy to be real, and so I think they just want to avoid all of that headache because it is a headache. Well, that makes a lot of sense, and and I'll tell you what, the amount of – people and maybe it's just twitter it could you i don't know if it's everywhere but twitter has been nothing at least until all the stuff with the presidential election took place yeah. which we won't get into that um <laughs> but before that all you could see on twitter is people talking about this new college football game and maybe that's just because of the people that you and i interact with regularly mitchell that's what they're interested in i'm sure it's not every sector of twitter but i've heard that the amount of money that ea has brought in from this new game is absolutely insane yeah they sold over four million or four million copies pre-ordered oh my gosh and most games only sell like big games sell 5 million copies, like the biggest games sell that. And they sold, I, or maybe it was like 3.5 million, but 3.5 to 4 million pre-order versions of the game. And it, we talked about, I mean, I feel like every time it's you and I, we talk nostalgia, but that's exactly <laughs> what it is. I, I don't think that like elementary school kids are flocking to this game in the way that 30-year-old males are. Yeah, this is, I would say 90%, and this is just a guess, obviously, I'd say about 90% of the people who bought this game have memories of when they played this game. The most recent version, which was over 10 years ago, back when they were in high school, college, maybe even a little bit out of college, those were the people who were regularly playing the newly updated versions of this game whenever they would put it out every single year. 
Well, we talked about it. The last time this game got released, I was in it. That, that's and right. think about how long ago it was that I was playing. Like, and you were also African American, weren't you? Yeah, and yes. terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I also, I, this is a funny feature. Um, and this is probably a very small sector of people that are about to know what I'm talking about. But have you ever heard of like the ultimate team features in the like Madden, FIFA? Yes. Yeah. So there's apparently, I haven't played it again, but. Uh, there's a similar version where you can select, you open packs and select players or something like this. And I'm just picturing when I would open a pack that has someone that isn't as good, you're like, oh, this guy stinks. <laughs> a pack that came out with me in it, every single person that opened it would be like, oh, this delete, Scrub. throw it in this cell. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's funny. That was a funny thought that I had today when I learned about that uh, feature. I good. feel like, I don't know if I, I'm sure I saw this on one of the social media. It might have been Instagram or I don't know. No, you shared something. I think it was on Instagram stories maybe less than a week ago. Somebody had posted one of your highlights from back whenever you were playing football. Yes. Do you this remember was on, this? This was on Instagram, yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's, actually, it's a guy that, uh, who's your football worldwide, I think? And he just posts random clips of random players throughout Indiana football history. He's done a couple of me. My only gripe with this one is I get tackled in it. Like <laughs> I have not, I don't have a ton of plays, but he's used one before. So he's got 13 other plays that I score on. Okay. And he chose one. Cause I had 14 touchdowns in my career. See, I was going to ask if you know how many times you got a touchdown. Yeah, was, there were 14 most incredible moments of my life. And that's 14 more than that's I'll ever have. That's not true. Laura, don't listen to that. She laughed. Oh, she's she's in the background? She yeah, she's going in the on. background. She's she. That was. They're not the most amazing moments of my life, but they were pretty good. They were pretty close. That's true. <laughs> Best moments of your, of your, I almost said prepubescent, but that wouldn't be. No, that, that would, would not make sense. Of my pre-marriage <laughs> life. Premarital, pre-child, yeah, pre being a true adult type of life. Yeah, we talk about adrenaline. Yeah, scoring in Ohio State, not more, not many more adrenaline-inducing things that can happen to a person. So you probably yeah, get booed I, a lot too as the away team. Oh yeah, well they they were actually pretty nice to us because they knew that you know we Unless were going to take them. like a garbage time touchdown. Maybe it doesn't matter then. I scored in the second quarter. Rich Lego on a uh, Z bow. I'll Lego. never, I'll never forget it linebacker sam linebacker flew right under so he couldn't hit the the under route so i had the little basic coming around it safety went wide perfect ball i split the middle it was like a 25 yard touchdown i'll never forget was it. was that your favorite touchdown of the 14 or however many it was uh no but it's a pretty good one all of them against purdue are just okay top of list uh but then the punt return against western kentucky your boys or Michigan, oh. the Michigan punt return. I think I, I I love the the play by play announcer on that one too. I think whoever that was, I can't remember, did a really good job with it. This is so weird because I think we've talked about this. Do you remember the plays from like your face, like your own eyes, or do you remember the TV copy? The Western Western Kentucky one, I remember through my eyes. I can still see the linebacker go to my right. And me make a move left, and Andre Booker push a guy aside, and I go underneath and Luke Timmy into my left. I can still see that with my eyes. <laughs> but the Michigan one, for whatever reason, it's been I've seen it more, like as a replay. Yeah. So I can remember the TV copy, and they zoom in enough on me that I look so slow. You also look I, really small, but I guess that's probably from every angle. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for adding that little bit, John. Yes, I also look very small. But I that also, adds to like the awesomeness of the touchdown, though, does it not? It it does, but there's also the the end of that game. We lose in double overtime when we threw me a, a whip route that Oh that I forgot, I forgot that's the same yeah, game. <laughs> same game. So that game is a little uh tarnished in my mind. I was like the third night we were home from the hospital, I was just awake at like four in the morning, three in the morning. And I turned on that game just because we scored a bunch of points and tried to remember how we lost that game. We were up by like two scores 
with five minutes left in the fourth quarter. The fact that we even got to where I can drop the ball is stunning. But it's just – there were so many good plays, and it reminded me how much Jordan Howard was just a monster. That's a lot of football talk to talk or to start this. But, it's uh, all right. See, the, the the sports talk isn't – I don't think it's it turns off people as much when it's more personal stuff, yeah. in my opinion. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's just me liking to learn about what a former player – you know did during his time playing football collegially but either way i actually now that i think about it i'm gonna go one more this is a much more obscure touchdown that people don't remember as much probably we were playing maryland at home and we had the bacon and legs combo back there so oh yeah you it was ian thomas right tyler no, no that wasn't ian thomas okay T- tyler natey and xander diamont were in the backfield and we ran like an option with those two and I came between them and got a reverse and I beat a kid to the pylon like 20 yards. This guy was a, like a corner. He was fast and I look super fast coming around that corner and I dive out and extend that one. That's probably my favorite play that I can remember that I see through my own eyes. That's cool. At least you have some. Because my my memory of of anything, again, I didn't play collegiate sports. I played high school sports. And we were on really just high school soccer. That was my main thing. So I'm already playing a a sport that people like to make fun of. Maybe not so much anymore. I think it's obviously gained some popularity over the years. Back then, yes. But uh, I don't want to say my my. I I, I, I don't really have a legacy. I, I was a very average high school soccer player just to be very blunt about it. But in our district semifinal round, if I remember correct, my senior year, I got a like a char- really bad Charlie horse. And I remember reacting kind of dramatically to it. And we were, I, I can't remember if we were already in overtime. It was a really intense matchup with one of our rivals. And I remember being made fun of by the the other team because they thought I was faking an injury for like stoppage time. And it was, I mean, you can't, I mean, they're not going to believe you, whether they, whether you say it's true or not. They just think you're, you know, doing one of those flops or something like that that people like to talk about. With you got to have a better memory than that. Dude, you, have, you block out those things. At least I try to. Like, you don't have a goal that you remember or anything? Oh, I wasn't talking about, so I guess I was just trying to feel for you talking about the, the Michigan the, the Michigan touchdown. Oh, that no. Kind of stuff. I, no. The, the drop touchdown. But I'll, I'll say I do have some good memories. And with high school specifically, my first goal, we played against a team called Paducah Tillman uh, down in Paducah, Kentucky. We were at one of these uh, midseason tournaments. And I it was just a great pass in from, from a guy. I think his name was Brandon Newton. I doubt he's listening to this, but if he is, shout out Brandon Newton. A solid cross right into the middle. And I was right there for an easy shot on goal. And that was – I had, I think I maybe had two goals all time. I played mainly m- defensive midfield, so I wasn't always you on the forward. attack. Yeah, but in certain situations, I would be like that, and that was one of those where you know I was on the other end of it. So let's go. But that, that, that's high school, though. Though it's not, that's not cool. Do anybody that says that I, I bet you could go around the NFL and ask people what their favorite touchdown was, and seventy five percent are going to say the touchdown against their rivals. My favorite one ever. I ran a slant on fourth and eight against Brebuff and ran for a touchdown as basically time was expiring. It's my favorite touchdown I've ever had at their homecoming. It's not even close. That that one trumps all 14 from college. I also scored an own goal trying to pass back to our goalie one Why time. Why are you changing was- this? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> it's just fun. It's just funny. And honestly, it's kind of funny that we're talking about this anyway because – Tonight, because it is Thursday when this comes out, I'm playing in my annual high school alumni soccer game. Let's which is go. It's always it's always fun seeing how out of shape everybody is, including myself, because it's really just a big goof around time and we all just have a good time with it. There are refs, so it is kind of semi official. Uh does anybody take also, it way too serious? Uh I don't I think people used to, but now that we've done it for I think this is the fourth year that we've done it. Um I don't think people, I think it's kind of just more of a hangout thing now. Especially Uh, as you get older. Yeah. There is, there's, there's one guy who comes every year. He's from the class of 2005. So that means this guy is, I mean, how old, if somebody graduated in 05. 37, because I graduated 2012 (laughs) or 38. That's insane. (laughs) 
Yeah. And he's out there getting yeah, it. Shout out to those to those guys who who and I don't think there's anybody. I mean, maybe there will be this year, but there's not anybody close to his age that comes out. He's the lone wolf from that from that age group. Talking about it like that makes me think about LeBron James. He's 39 <laughs> years old. Have you watched? Any, what do you uh, think of all this brawny stuff? Do you think it's absurd? Because I think it's absurd. Yeah, I'm just kind of tired of listening to it. I think the kid's a good player, but we'll see if I mean. I think he's good. He he would have been a good college player. There's no reason he should have gone in the NBA draft. And I know it's it was. Think, some I mean, nepotism. think about it, it's LeBron has only so many years. You get in a position where you can play with your son in the NBA for the Los Angeles Lakers. You don't think they're going to be talking about that, even if Bronny never sees the court. Being yeah. at practice with your dad—that's the coolest. I think if you, I mean, it's such a such a unique situation, but. Any chance you get to play with someone that you love and respect, whether it's your dad or your uncle or your brother or whoever it is, you you have to jump on those moments. You take it no matter what. I just played in the member guest with my dad at his club. And when you get building up to it, nothing else matters. If work meeting got scheduled, that meeting is getting canceled. Like, this is what I'm doing today. So getting to do that on the scale of the Lakers, come on. You have to take that. You have to. It's cool, and I, and I don't disagree with anything that you're saying, but it does feel like that when you think of the big picture in his overall career, maybe Bronny doesn't care, and maybe that's why he agreed to go through this no. process. But I feel like he's – and maybe maybe I'm totally wrong about this, but I feel like he's just going to make the the longevity of his career a whole lot shorter than he would have been if he would have developed in college a lot more. But again, what the hell do I know? I didn't play college sports. I guess it all demand, it depends on his drive. Like, obviously, LeBron had an immense, immense drive to be the best. Bronny's been on the FaZe Clan video game team. Like, he does a <laughs> lot of different things. Maybe he's like – Sweet. I'll get to play for the Lakers. I already have a bunch of money. I'll never have to worry about money. So he's not playing to put food on the table. He's not paying to or playing to buy his mom a house. She has houses, many. So you you the fact that he even got this far and it's a conversation that is does he deserve it or not is pretty impressive. Yeah. And maybe he's you know, he's good. I don't know. Mitchell, have you seen any of those Tesla trucks out on the road? I sat in a Tesla truck. You sat in a Tesla truck? I did. Speaking of the playing golf, I it always comes back to golf for me. <laughs> it feels like I play every year in the I think I've talked about I talked about it last year a little bit, the Anthony Calhoun charity golf outing. Okay. Uh, is this the thing where you this isn't where you met Ryan Walters, was it? Yeah. So I played okay. with him, played with him in this. He has it every year. They raise a bunch of money, but I play with a couple surgeons from one of the big medical practices around here. And one of the guys really likes cars. It's a successful practice. He's one of the owners. He does well. He got himself a Tesla truck. So after the round, I sat in the cyber truck and watched the spaceship come on. They're weird looking in person. They are. I saw the only place I've seen one around here was over in the east end of Louisville, which is kind of the ritzy part of town. And I was over there taking a detour away from my regular route because of, I don't know if there was an accident or construction, but I was on a two-lane road, and what do you know, a big, boxy, electronic, cyber Tesla truck drives by, and I'm like, no shit. These things actually do exist, and people actually buy them. They're everywhere in Indianapolis. I've probably seen 20 of them on the road. And maybe what it's is the it about? Like, they person, don't... But- is it just because people want to say they have one? Because I don't think they don't look very aesthetically pleasing. I think, yeah, it's a novelty. Like, I have a cyber truck. It's like the smart car back in the day. Yeah. When that was a new thing. Way cooler, I think. So this thing could probably run over a smart car twice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, they're cool looking. I, I mean, I wouldn't buy one. They're not the most spacious, but if you got the cash, I, I mean, it's cool. I, they definitely turn eyeballs or turn heads, get eyeballs when they're driving by, if that's what you're looking for. It has the same kind of effect that like a Ferrari would have. 
Is there like a secret mode where like if you push a certain switch or push a certain combination of buttons, it'll t- kind of like turn into an airplane or a rocket and you just start flying? It wouldn't surprise me if that exists. You didn't show me all the buttons, but I'm sure there's some secret you can activate if you pay a little bit extra on the subscription that happens. Have you ever driven a Tesla? No. Okay. So I also, they're all electric, right? Yeah. I also okay. drove a Tesla and experienced the autopilot. Take your hands off. You plug in your donation or destination and put your hands on your lap. There's definitely something in the cyber truck. If those regular Teslas are doing that, <laughs> <laughs> there's something in that cyber truck where it's like a James Bond. It's got guns in the headlights or something. I don't know what's going on, but yeah, they're, they're sweet. It just looks too, maybe, I don't know if this is the right way to describe it, but militaristic to not have some secret capabilities like that. I wonder how hard it would be to make that like a military vehicle. Because it looks Humvee-ish, but I think you would have a big time struggle with the electricity. You'd have to charge it all the time. You don't have the benefit of throwing on a bunch of gas tanks on like a Humvee. That's interesting. I wonder, it'd be faster than a Humvee. Yeah. You could do like quick strike assault missions. That'd be interesting. (laughs) I wonder if they've ever had those conversations. I'm sure they have. I bet the conversations that Elon Musk has with the people that we would never speak with because he's just, he's just Elon Musk. I'm sure, I'm sure he's a big time. I don't know if conspiracy theorist is the right word, but I bet, I bet he has the in on some things that are some, you know, private information that us normal peons here on earth. Don't, don't get to understand or learn about. That's funny that you said here on earth, because I would think more so, with his rocket company than Tesla. <laughs> That's SpaceX. True. Yeah. They've and speaking of like, X, like and I think I talked about this on on In Touch today, or I should say yesterday. Um what, what what was the whole point of renaming it from Twitter? And I know there's some people who thought the name Twitter was dumb to begin with, but I don't like you would have never you'd never change the name of Facebook, you'd never change the name of Instagram unless you're Elon Musk. I guess I know his whole idea was to like create something that is like the one stop social network for everything, but I don't think that's what X and or Twitter is ever going to be. It's always going to be what it is, and that is a very niche social network platform where really most people use it for news, most people use it for sports like conversations, or really outside of those two things. I guess maybe you have some other niches that might be a part of it. But I think outside of people who are obsessed with politics and or sports, you don't have a lot of people who use Twitter every single day. Twitter is by far my favorite app. So I'm not like I will use Twitter before text messaging. I think Twitter is <laughs> the best. Twitter is I use Twitter a little bit different than you're describing. Yeah, I get my sports news, but I don't really care. Just go win the games. Like I'm not going to. Freak but out you use it for the sports game. interaction, though, and you like to troll people True. and that type of stuff. That I absolutely do, and that more ties into the like main reason that I like it. <laughs> people are so funny on there. You get your like mean, hide behind the screen people. Okay, push those out; they're irrelevant. But when you find the people that are very funny, and you start interacting with people that are just really witty. I could read just Twitter replies and all kinds of different stupid tweets forever. I think it's it's kind of like you remember Vine? Yes, the really Vine was like I don't want to say it was TikTok before TikTok cuz I don't think that's true. It's way better than TikTok. It was I think the best thing about it is that the videos were only 6 seconds long and you had to be and funny. It was a, it, and there were what? so many different strategies. Like some people were very simple, very simple. Didn't really say much and just use their facial expressions. Other people had these big elaborate videos and that's kind of what Twitter is. Like it's pretty simple. It's the written word. And that's, I think the hardest medium to be funny in. And when you find someone like I follow a couple sports people, 
to get all my football interaction, I just type in IUFB. Like, I don't follow any of these people. I reply to randoms. <laughs> You're just <laughs> They're probably like, like, how did he find me? <laughs> it's just a, a schmo with five followers. I don't care. I'm talking to you because you have something funny to say, probably. <laughs> and that's why I think it's the best. And I think I, I mean, we don't have to talk that to death. But the reason that he does stuff like that is because he can. You, you take risks when you paid $44 billion for it. Like, it's yeah. his play toy. It's not going to make him a bunch of money. He already has all the money. That's true. If it's just a toy, I mean, and then you have people criticizing, like, really, you have all this money and that's what you're spending it on. But again, who are we to tell anyone what to do with their money? Yeah, yeah. So. And I think it's good that he he made it, or at least from our little peon perspective, <laughs> to where not a lot of stuff is filtered. It's just yeah. real stuff. And you have to discern what you read into some of this stuff. Like I do hate how you can't tell who's like a verified account anymore. That's probably the biggest negative from any of it. Maybe you don't care about that type of thing. No, I don't interact. With, like if you're verified, I'm much less likely to interact with you. Okay. I want, I want the real person. I want the guy that doesn't have this big audience that has to watch what he says. I you want, want the raw human. You want Billy Bob 1134. Can't wait. That Without thinks, a profile picture. Yes. That just thinks nothing will ever be right in the world. That, yeah, I want that guy. <laughs> I want the miserable, sad, because whether we're winning, I can talk trash to him, or when I'm we're losing, me and him can get along. We bond. That's the kind of person I'm looking for. <laughs> and that's yeah there's nothing else it's weird but it is funny because i you're you and i are kind of the exact opposite there are times where i like to to seek out and and read all the stuff that you're talking about but i can't be an instigator because if yeah. the wrong like i i know how to tell when somebody's being absolutely insane but i don't i just don't like to be told that uh, i don't know i guess i just don't like knowing that the person talking to me is just saying something that they're only saying because it's emotionally charged yes. and has no real facts behind it. That's pretty I guess much my like, whole Twitter is emotionally yeah. charged nonsense. <laughs> yeah. But I guess like there's, there, there's a line between knowing it and just fooling around with it, that type of a thing. But, and I think a good example of, of finding good humor on Twitter is something we talked about a couple of weeks ago with the Amish, the Amish basketball players. And you just, and the, those kind of stories pop up out of nowhere. They just grace your feed. And then you get to watch videos about that for 10 minutes. It's the best. And what happened? What did they get on the news? Somebody should, they probably ran away if, if somebody with a news camera came after them, but they just show up in a Fort Wayne park and go about their time hooping. And I, I still love the comment. If they, if they hit this step back, they have TV or something like that. That was <laughs> it's so good. good. It's so good. Yeah. They did it for the love of the game. They're not in it for the fame. Yeah. <sighs> so that's crazy. What else is going on, man? It's, um, it's, it's hot still too. And I'm not, I'm not defaulting and talking about the weather, but it is, it is mid July. I'm looking forward to getting closer to the fall. I think I've made it known many a time before that i i don't hate this time of year but there are many reasons to not like this time of year and not even just weather related there's not a whole lot going on if you're not doing things like going on vacation um you're if you're a sports fan like us you're kind of in this waiting period where all the stuff you really like to do is kind of like it's almost here but it's not so all you can do is talk about what's coming up so we're kind of in that lull in terms of, I mean, not that I'm not enjoying life, that kind of thing, but I do think there are mundane times and you can find joy in the mundane. I do things like I've talked about my retro gaming. and I know you you do some gaming too, Mitchell, but there are some times when you, you want to, you know, you get so excited about what's coming next that maybe you hurry it up a little too much. At least that's what I do sometimes. Maybe you're, you're a much older, wiser Mitchell page now that you are a father and, and you have... Uh, a five o'clock shadow that actually appears at two o'clock because you're you're awake at all hours of the day and it's just <laughs> it's just different. Well, I'm lucky. This is like the best time, best sports time of the year for me because 
it's still I'm still playing competitive golf, and that's when all this happens. So my summers are pretty pretty regimented with tournaments, just something kind of to look forward to and practice for, and it gives me something to look forward to until football comes back, which my last tournament is a week from today, and that's August. Fall camp started, so I'm I'm gearing up. Are you uh you don't play that Arizona tournament that you played in? That's in the fall, right? That's not coming up it's, anytime soon. It's right before Thanksgiving this year. Um, okay. Last year was more in the winter, but we did qualify again, so I'll be out there on the like the 18th through the 23rd or something. Yeah. Did you, uh, did you, did you, you probably didn't listen to last week's episode. Did you not blame me if you didn't listen? But did you hear the, so I played a call. It wasn't a call that hit our hotline. And I don't know that I'll replay it right now, but have you, have you ever heard the, the Pizza Hut break in phone call? I no. played it not realizing that it's something that was apparently old news because I had just heard it for the first time on my wife's TikTok feed. But there's this guy, uh, you'll have to go back and watch it because I spent, way too much time laughing at this uh not so much while we were doing it on the show because i'd already watched it listened to it so many times before then (laughs) yeah right but there's this guy and he he breaks into a pizza hut calls the police on himself tells the police that he's jesus and that he's sitting in the pizza hut or he says he's, he's jesus that he came back down to earth and that he's sitting in the pizza hut eating a pizza drinking a mountain dew and that he's he's here to clean up all the Judases of this world, and he's ready to clean this earth up. And it is he is quite the character. That's so kind of haven't scary. heard that. I uh, oh, it, it was it was one of the funniest things I'd ever heard, at least without any context beforehand. Okay, I'm gonna have to look it up because I definitely have not heard about this. Yeah, maybe uh, I'd love to. I want to get your live reaction, but I don't necessarily want to play it on the podcast. Maybe maybe we'll wrap things up here in a minute, and I'll play it for you. Uh, once we get off here, because I think it's I think it's absolutely hilarious. But that works for me. What else we got here? Anything else we want to go in? No, man. Uh, I'm just... So I had written down. I had written down. We don't. You don't have to answer this if you want. But I was going to ask if you think you could beat Trump or Biden in golf, because I do know that's uh, that's something that they talked about during. Their, and I know obviously Biden's not going to be running for president any longer, but that was obviously a topic of conversation whenever they were arguing over who was better at golf on the debate stage. And it was just really a clown show between those two. Well, I know you're a YouTube user. You utilize the tube. I do utilize. Did you see tube. Donald Trump and Bryson DeChambeau came out with a video together where they play the front, <laughs> they play the front tees and try to break 50 for 18 holes. So they try to make a million birdies and Eagles and stuff. And I don't know how I should say this, but what I'll say is Trump actually has some game. And I think that whether you like him or you don't like him, like Biden doesn't carry this same kind of aura. Yeah. And I think Biden, like you've seen some videos of him. If you haven't go look, cause he's a <laughs> So he, the, the aura of like, Oh my gosh, it's the sitting president would wear off pretty quick when you're playing him for money. Cause he yeah. sucks. So you're like, I'm just going to step on this guy's throat. <laughs> But Trump can hit some shots. So he's going to carry this like bigger than life personality through the whole match because he can sneak up on you and beat you on some holes. So you're constantly going to be thinking like, this guy knows something I don't versus Biden. You're up by 20 shots in the first four holes that you can have conversations about other things in life. With Trump, you got to stay focused. He was actually pretty impressive. His golf game was pretty impressive when he played with Bryson. That, again, that is our, not political at all. Say our, our political views. Golf. If you're the kind of person who thinks that I'm mean, there, are, there are some people who will read into anything and be like, oh, he must like this guy because he's complimenting his golf game, which yeah, again, but I'll tell you is I don't care at all. Me neither. No. I just think he's, uh, he had more game than I was anticipating. I didn't like it. <laughs> all right, then we'll, uh, we'll go ahead and wrap this up. Good chatting with you, Mitch. Glad to have you back on board for, for another episode of out of touch this week. Yeah, man. I'm probably knock on wood as things progress and get better in our household. I think I'm back every week. So whether you like it or not, I'm here. That's right. And I know I said this last week, but I was misinformed. I'm glad I clarified before or as we got started today, but 
I guess next week will officially be our last show before we cross the threshold of being around for a whole year. So that's awesome. We're, it's a big we're still, we're still trucking. Yeah. yeah, I guess longevity can be an accomplishment regardless of, of anything else. So 100 percent. Good stuff. Thank you, Mitchell. As always, look forward to having Dustin back with us as well. I want to hear about his concert experience and really his big to media days experience because he's the kind of guy that likes to talk about some some nonsense and i appreciate yes. that so same until next week we'll we'll talk to you then this has been another episode of out of touch